Welcome to this Open TX Mix Tip. We are going to talk about setting up flaps on a Tyrannus radio. And the reason that we're doing this video is a direct result of subscriber requests. So I need to do a shout out to Mr. Dynascrew and also to Tony, who are the last two people who asked about it. If there are other people that have asked and I've omitted your names, apologies in advance. But it's something that quite a few people have asked about and it's obviously something that is a bit tricky for some pilots. To be fair, I've occasionally had models, particularly ones that have scale flaps that retract into the wing, that can be a little bit tricky to set up. So in this video, we're going to talk through the two methods that I've used. Uh, the first one is a little bit iterative, it's a little bit trial and error, and that's the way that most people end up doing it. The second way is using a little servo checker to get the numbers that you need, and then to be able to program those directly into your Tyrannus, so it's spot on first time. And that's second method and I'll put a time index down in the description if you just want to jump to that one that second method is pretty much bulletproof and you'll get it right every time and you won't potentially have an issue where you're going to overdrive your servo in a wing so what we're going to do is first of all let's jump into companion and have a look at what companion normally does or open tx normally does when you ask it to set up flaps as part of a model so here we are in Open Companion, and here is the basic kind of model that you tend to get set up when you've been through the menu to do it. So we have our outputs for rudder, elevator, throttle. We haven't got an aileron here, I can't bother to set that up, but we, the thing we're interested in here is this bit here for the flaps. So channel five is the flaps on switch A. So if you simulate that, by default what switch A does is it rams the channel right from 100 all the way down to minus 100. And that's usually way, way too much travel than a flap servo will need. So what I tend to do, first thing, is to reduce that weight down to something like 20 or 30. And I also disconnect all the linkages for the flaps between the servo and the flap itself on the model. And the reason I do that is then, uh, while I'm trying to figure out how the servos are going to move, the servos aren't going to overload the hinges on the flap or try and push the flap through the top of the wing. So now that's going to give us an awful lot less movement. So now I should be able to more safely plug this into the model and then use the linkage just to see where the flap needs to be and then I can figure out what the actual distance needs to be and maybe 30 might not be enough. I might need it to go a little bit more in one direction than the other and then hopefully by doing this and playing around with it I'll get to a position where one side will be the flaps in the upright position and again this is pretty iterative on the radio but that's fine so maybe it's 50 on one side and actually that can go as far as 35 before it, the flap starts to look silly there we go so that would be how I would do it I wouldn't have connected the servo links at all at this point and then what I do is once I'm happy that the travel is right then I would physically connect the servo link from the servo to the flap itself and just mechanically make sure that when the flap was up, it was perfectly in line with the wing. Now that's the iterative way that I would normally do it. There is another way which I find personally is an awful lot easier. So let's go to the bench and let me show you the trick that I use that gets it spot on every time. So here on the bench is the setup that I use to get this spot on first time every time. Now I've made a model of a flap. Um, apologies, it's a little bit basic, but what all it is, is a servo popping through a wing with some kind of mechanical linkage out onto the flap on the back. And I'm gonna run the flap using a little servo checker, and this is the trick. Now I would always recommend that if you are building planes or interested in flying wings or anything like that, get yourself one of these servo checkers. It's handy for actually making sure the servos that you're about to install in your model work well, and that's important because it's always heartbreaking to put a plane together and then find you've installed a dud. It's also handy for 90 degreeing your servos, so you can do some of the linkages and bits and pieces before you do the radio, but it is particularly handy for this little trick. So let me plug him in. So what we can do is on the model, so what I would typically do is plug this in and then I would move it so I know when the flap is level. 
So the flap level is about 1955. So a high value, PWM value, is about 2000. So this particular flap on this terribly made model, it goes from about 1950 down to, I would say, four flaps is probably about there. Actually, if I really was going crazy, it would be about there. So it's about 1330-ish. So if I have the flap going from 1330 to 1950 or 1960, that will give me complete movement. And I can also decide what my middle position would be on that. So let's remember those two numbers. We've got kind of a 1950 and we've got kind of a 1330 are the two positions that we need for this particular model. Knowing those two numbers from this, it makes it really easy to set it up in OpenTX. So let's go back to Companion and we can actually set the flap channel to give us exactly these numbers. So here we are back in Companion and we're going to set up this flap demo with exactly the numbers that we need. But we can't put in the numbers for the PWM values because that's not how OpenTX currently works. So what we're going to have to do is do a very quick bit of math to convert those PWM numbers into the plus and minus numbers we need in here for everything to work. So Let's just quickly put a slide up to explain the relationship between the OpenTX values of minus 100 to 100 and what that usually means for the PWM values that are output by the receiver. And as you can see here on the slide, minus 100 is the 1000 PWM value and plus 100 right at the other right hand side is 2000. And by default, the way the flaps are set up, it means that the middle position is 1500 and then full left and full right, depending on how the channel drives, obviously it could be reversed. But that means that by default, the flaps have been driven full hard right and full hard left. And we've already said that that isn't going to work. Now we know the PWM values from our little servo checker trick that we need to pop in here. So we need to have about 1330 as the low position. I'm going to go about 1920 for the top position, which means if we kind of halve that out, it's going to be about 1625. So if we look on the top then, we're going to need something like minus 34 to the other side. Now, I used to, believe it or not, actually sit with a little ruler and kind of work it out. But there's a little bit of math that's dead simple. And once you've used it, you'll know how it all works. So the bit of math is what you need to do is know the PWM value that we're after. Minus 1500 divided by 5. And that gives you your channel value. So, for example, if we had uh, the middle channel position of 1500, then 1500 minus 1500 divided by five is going to be zero. Similarly, if it's gonna be 2000, which is full travel that we're interested in, then 2000 minus 1500 is gonna be 500. Divide 500 by five is going to give you 100, which is the right hand side. So we can put in the values that we've figured out from our servo checker using this quick little bit of math and then we end up with these three positions. We want one end of the channel to be minus 34, the middle position about 25, and flaps up for us is that 1920-ish, which is about 84. So let's go back in companion and we're just gonna plug those three numbers in. So flaps up, we now know exactly what that number needs to be. That needs to be 84. We're actually going to add a second of slow up, slow down to each of those. Then the negative side uh, it actually needs to be about minus 34. So we were close with the other one. And uh, we're going to say one and one again. Okay. Now what's going to happen here is if we simulate this now, SA is going to move around, but you'll notice that the middle position is almost at full flap deflection. Now we know what that middle position can be. So we can actually add an extra line in here. We're going to call it flap mid or something like that, just so I can remember what it is. Uh, we are going to set the source as max. We're going to select the value that we want. We said the middle channel the value worked out at 25. And again, we're going to make sure 
but it always moves. So there we go. Let's actually move that up. So we've got flaps up, flaps mid, flaps down. Oops, we haven't put that on the switch. Let's add that in SA in the middle position. That looks more like it. Okay. So we simulate it now. Then SA moves the flaps in those three positions. And those three positions are actually going to be exactly what we're after for the flaps. And we know that those are exactly the right positions, 84, 25, and minus 34, because that's what we figured out from our little bit of math based on the exact PWM values that the servo needed to set up the flaps. So that would be the way that I would always do it. Plug your servo checker into the flap servos on your model. See what maximum and minimum deflection needs to be. Use that little bit of math to figure out the values. And then just plug those values directly into the three positions of the switch that you're interested in. And your flaps will be spot on first time. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.